Okay, guys, right, welcome back to our reading lessons on the London Eye Mystery. So today we are having a look at the second part of the first chapter. Okay, if you remember last time we met our main character who um, has told us that he is, his favourite thing to do is go on the London Eye and he gave us a lot of description about why it was his favourite thing to do and then you guys answered some questions on it. Okay, so... We'll go back to activity one in a minute. Okay, so we're still on the chapter called A Giant Bicycle Wheel in the Sky, and it carries on like this. We took Salim to the eye because he'd never been up before. A stranger came up to us in the queue, offering us a free ticket. So they've taken this person called Salim, so we've got another new character introduced here, and he's never been on the eye before. So that tells me that he likely doesn't come from London, um, and He's come to visit whoever our main character is and they've taken him on this. A stranger came up to us in the queue offering us a free ticket. So that already raises some very red flags for me here because we've got the stranger, which obviously you're not supposed to take anything from a stranger, and he's offered them a free ticket, which if uh, you know anything about getting free things, they're normally not as good as they first appear. So that's given me a very big red flag there. We took it and gave it to Salim. We shouldn't have done this, but we did. Okay, so already there is a suggestion that they've done something wrong and something bad happens now. Um, but they've done it, so let's see what happens. He went up on his own at 11.32, the 24th of May, and was due to come down at 12.02 the same day. So he went up on his own. So the fact that they've got him a free ticket means that he's had to go up by himself without any of uh, the people who he trusts. And then it says, was due to come down. So that suggests that he was supposed to come down at 12.02, but something has meant that he didn't. Okay, so um, there's also, if you look at it, he is very specific about the timings here. He says 11.32 on the 25th of May. Now the fact that he says 11.32 and not around 11, means that we have a bit more introduction to this. So it either tells us that the timings are very, very important as to what has happened to Salim, or it tells us that our character is somebody who is very sort of keen on detail and very aware of what is happening at all times around him. But we'll have to read more of the book to find that out. He turned and waved to Kat and me as he boarded, but he, you couldn't see his face just his shadow. Okay, so he's turned away. So Salim is feeling fine about this. You've got this idea that he's absolutely fine. He's waved to Cat and the main character and has got on the eye. Um, but the suggestion that you couldn't see his face, just his shadow, um, sort of is, is slightly foreboding. It's not, it's not making you feel very safe that you can't see him. You can only see his shadow. So it could be anyone that is getting on the eye. They sealed him in with 20 other people whom we didn't know. Okay, now the fact that they say sealed there is an interesting use of vocabulary because it makes me imagine that he's been sort of locked in or trapped, sort of as if he's been put into somewhere dangerous and he can't get out again. The way they've used sealed there um, is really interesting because you wouldn't usually use sealed for something nice that you're doing. It would be, you know, he's sort of closed in and goes on this lovely ride, but they've sealed him in with 20 other people whom we didn't know. So again, we're going back to this idea of he's completely surrounded by strangers and we're not quite sure what they're going to do. Cat and I tracked Salim's capsule as it made its orbit. Okay, so they're following the capsule, um, the little bubble that they know is his as it goes round and makes its orbit round the wheel. When it reached its highest point, we both said now at the same time, and Kat laughed and I joined in. That's how we knew we'd been tracking the right one. Okay, so once it got to the top, they both said now as it's reached the top of the ride, um, and they both know that they were looking at the same one. We saw the people bunch up as the capsule came back down, facing northeast towards the automatic camera for the souvenir photograph. Okay, now if you've ever been on the London Eye, they take a photo of you um, as you're going around on this trip. Um, um, so the people on the capsule have obviously all sort of grouped together towards the camera 
um, to make sure that they get inside their souvenir photograph. They were just dark bits of jacket, legs, dresses and sleeves. Okay, so the author is making sure that we know you can't actually tell who is who here. You can't see any of their faces. You can just see the shadows and the clothes of them. Okay, so dark silhouettes almost of jacket, legs, dresses and sleeves. So then it goes, then the capsule landed. Okay, so they've got to the end of the ride, the capsule has come back, and we're at the end of the ride. The doors opened and the passengers came out in twos or threes. So we've got, every, we've got that sort of image of everybody piling out of this capsule as they get off. Now, again, if you've ever been on the London Eye, you will know it doesn't stop moving as you get off. It sort of continues its rotation. So the doors open and you have to sort of file out as it's going around and then the new people get on. They walked off in different directions. Their faces were smiling. Okay, so everyone, you've got this idea of the crowd of, from the capsule have got off. They've all gone off in different directions. They're very happy with their trip. Um, and they're obviously going to carry on with the rest of the day. Their paths probably never crossed again. So this is the, this idea that you do all these lovely touristy things with a whole bunch of strangers. So you have this, um, activity that you do with people that you are most likely never going to see again um, so their paths probably never cross again but Salim wasn't among them okay so between the time of Salim getting on the London Eye and the people getting off Salim hasn't got off we waited for the next capsule and the next and the one after that okay so the main character is now questioning or maybe we maybe we were tracking the wrong one. Maybe he was on a different one. Um, you sort of your brain starts to make excuses for the fact that the person is missing, and he's trying to think of ways that could explain what has happened. So he's trying to think that maybe they just missed which capsule he was on, and he must be on the next one. But they've waited for the next and the next and the one after that. So they've waited for three. That means he is still not there. He still didn't appear. Somewhere, somehow, in the 30 minutes of riding the eye, in his sealed capsule, he had vanished off the face of the earth. Okay, so he's had a 30 minute ride in the eye in a sealed capsule, which is very unlikely that he could have got off, because obviously he's sealed in this capsule and has gone round the London Eye, which is very high. Salim has vanished off the face of the earth. Now, the fact he used face vanished off the face of the earth it's quite a serious um connotation to that it's showing that there is no trace of him at the moment it gives the idea that there's no evidence there's no explanation nobody can quite figure out what's happened and it's as if he has just disappeared in a puff of smoke this is how having a funny brain that runs on a different operating system from other people's helped me to figure out what had happened now, this is quite a change of tone here. So we've got all of this about Salim disappearing. And then this last line is referring back to the um, narrator. So the, the main character within this text. And we still don't know his name from this chapter, um, but it's Ted if, uh, from reading on in the book. Okay, So he's talking about his own brain. Ted is talking about the fact that he has a bit of a funny brain. That's how he describes it. And he says it runs on a different operating system from other people's. Okay, so we've now got this idea that Ted is not what you would consider uh, normal or the same as everybody else here. He's described himself as having a funny brain. So he sees himself as different from other people. Um, and the way his brain works and the way his brain thinks from what he has said is different from other people. And that, in this case, has helped him to figure out what has happened. Okay, And that sort of links back to what I was saying about the timings earlier in the passage. The fact that he could remember it was 11.32 and 12.02. So the fact that he got the timings down to a minute means that he has a brain that works on detail, that remembers key facts. And actually, in terms of someone going missing, that it would be quite an important thing that would help them. Okay, so that's the second part of um, our reading lesson. So you've watched this video. Obviously, your first activity is you need to think 
what do you think happened to Salim? So you're going to use your prediction skills and you are going to think, right, Salim was on this secret, on this uh, trip on the London Eye. What has happened? Where has he gone? What has, what could have happened that means that he has now disappeared? So that's your first activity. And then you go on to answer some vocabulary, some fact retrieval and some inference questions. Again, any of the work that you do, please feel free to send in to your teachers or we would love to see it. Okay, speak to you soon, guys.